Welcome to our review on detecting cations, the hydroxide precipitate test. Now, we've already had a look to see one way that we can detect these ions, but there is an alternate method that we can use. And in order to do this, we need to understand a couple of facts about hydroxides. If we're talking about the group one hydroxides, then those are soluble in water whereas most other metal hydroxides are insoluble in water. And it's because of this that we actually use sodium hydroxide solution in these experiments. So what we actually do here is we've got our unknown solution and we add sodium hydroxide to it. And what happens is that we make a precipitate and the color of that precipitate will tell us which metal ion is present. So the way we actually carry out our hydroxide precipitate test is very simple. You have your test tube containing the unknown and then using a pipette, you're just going to add a few centimeters. So just about two centimeters cubed of our sodium hydroxide. So nice, simple experiment there to do. And then we have a look at the colors. You do need to remember these colors much like with our flame test. So again, get that flashcard pack out and create some flashcards about these to help you learn them. Different chemicals this time that we're identifying compared to our flame tests. So if we end up with a green precipitate, then that would be iron two, so Fe2 plus. If the precipitate is an orange brown color, then it's iron three or Fe3 plus. If it's a blue precipitate, then it's copper. If it's a white precipitate, it may be either calcium or zinc. So what we then need to do is carry out a further step to our experiment to identify is it calcium or zinc? Because what we find is zinc hydroxide will dissolve and form this colorless solution if we add an excess of sodium hydroxide, whereas the calcium hydroxide won't dissolve. So if you end up with a white precipitate, then you add a few centimeters cubed more of our sodium hydroxide solution if it then forms a colorless solution, it was zinc. If it doesn't and it stays with a white precipitate, then it was calcium. The last thing I've got for you here then is the equation for the reaction that we see, or at least one example of it. So in this example, I've given you copper sulfate and we're gonna add our sodium hydroxide to it. So we'd form copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate. So make sure that you do practice writing out these balanced symbol equations for it. The other part I've given you there is the net ionic equation for the reaction. And again, we're just going to focus on the bits involved in the reaction we are concerned with. So the copper two plus ion reacts with the hydroxide ion to make our copper hydroxide. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe how to carry out the hydroxide precipitate test and you can recall the colors that would allow us to identify those aqueous metal ions.